Hey, 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 peeps. We're back for part 11 of the 3 Degree of Freedom Motion Simulator Platform Top Frame Build. And now, guys, no racing rig is complete without a handbrake. Now, I bought this cheap handbrake off Fleabay some months ago. I used it a little while when I was playing Dirt Rally 2, and it stopped working because the little circuit board inside here that uh, the USB connects to fell off. A couple of screws came loose, it fell out, and it stopped working. I've pulled it apart, I've repaired it. What a piece of crap. But it's working again now, and so I'm going to install it on the rig. This little shifter here is just in here because I can put it in there, okay? I won't be using that. This was another little cheap uh, shifter, about $79. I think it cost me on Fleabay. Uh, it's aluminium, and it's not too bad. Well, actually, it's it's rubbish. Um, I have used it a lot, as you can see. I've worn the side of it out here because it's only a pretty soft aluminium casing. And uh, it's a seven speed with reverse, so it actually is really hard to shift because um, it's so weak on its springs and stuff. It's really easy to miss shifts. And if I've modified it with this part that came with it, this is normally something you install for it to become a sequential shifter. But I've just run a couple of techs into it to keep it a nice tight little five speed with reverse because really I mainly drive cars with five speed at the most i drive all the old classics around you know because an old bloke like me i don't like driving too fast so i just put around uh with a five speed but anyway that's just by the by i'm waiting on this fanatec 1.5 club sport shifter to turn up with my other peripherals i've said to the post office what is the go with your half ass couriers why would a courier drop two items of the six say that he's coming back on monday and then kick off on their uh, electronic sign-off, I guess you'd call it, that all items have been delivered. Well, the post offices have opened an investigation. So let's hope that some sanity prevails and that the doctor sees his expensive Fanatec gear actually turn up or whether someone's going to get a cheap deal on Fleabay. Don't worry, peeps. You'll be the first to hear about what happens and the doctor's going to go away now and take some medication and calm down. But before he does that, he's going to start building the little modifications that he's going to need to build on the rig to house this handbrake. So this may be something that uh, you guys want to follow as well. It is pretty cool having a handbrake, um, especially if you're playing Dirt Rally. Uh, it does help get around some of those bends. Uh, so yeah, look, I'm going to build a little bracket so I'm going to get into that now, and if you want to follow along with this modification, this is a part of the top frame, so technically we're still working on the top frame. Still waiting on the button box to turn up for the other side of the rig. That should be a couple of days away, and then I will be in earnest building a little modification or setting up some type of bracket to house that, I think, on the steering wheel frame um, at this stage or on the right-hand slider. I'm going to see how the USB cable that runs from that uh, will be able to not get in the way if I run it on that 35 by 35 slider on the right. That might be an issue. Uh, that might be better for a wireless keyboard. So anyway, let's get into this handbrake uh, bracket because I know you guys are champing at the bit to get a handbrake or have a way of putting a handbrake on if you already own one and you're going to build this three degree freedom motion platform. Okay, guys, now it's important to keep in mind that obviously this modification that I'm making and this bracketing system I'm making is going to be for this cheap eBay handbrake that a dime a dozen now on eBay. They're about 79 bucks. I think I bought this for about 49 bucks when they first started coming out. I have had this one for a while. But anyway, so this is based around the bracketing that comes with this handbrake cheap handbrake from eBay. So this is what I'm gonna to do to mount this because I wanna mount this old school so then I can just pull the handbrake up like you would in your old school everyday driver. I don't like them mounted like this. I know you can mount them next to the shifter and stuff, but I'm gonna mount mine next to the seat like you would in your daily driver. To do that, I'm gonna use some more of our 30 by 30 angle, the same angle that our seat frame has been uh, built on. And it's just going to sit over our seat frame angle and tech screw in through our seat angle into our 30 by 30 box. So it will be movable. It will just mean that you'll need to tech out and tech in. 
Now to carry the handbrake, I'm gonna use a 30 by 30 by two mil box. Okay, and that will be positioned, I'll give you the measurements here in a minute, how it's all drawn up. If you decide to go with a handbrake like this, you'll be able to copy this design. All right, that's, that's just gonna weld onto our angle there. Okay, and then our bracket on this guy will tech screw through the box. Okay, it's really that simple. And you could even move this along the box if you wanted to tweak how you want it, but out there is where it needs to be for me. I've sat in the sim, in the seat, to line this all up and get the positions to work out the lengths, etc., and the dimensions of our bracketing system here. So let's go to the bench and talk about the measurements. So as mentioned, guys, we're going to use some of our 30 by 30 by 2 mil angle. First thing to do is to get this angle all clean. Now, mine is a painted angle because this is some metal being used for something else. So it was already painted in a white enamel. I've just roughed it all and everything to get it ready to paint in black, which is what this is all going to be painted in soon. But I've just cleaned the end where I need to weld, obviously, completely back to metal. You more than likely will have a new angle. This is a 90 angle. You'll have it new, but it will still have mill scale all over it and you'll have to get it cleaned back nice and shining anyway. So get it all cleaned up first. Once it's cleaned up, you will cut a length of 100 millimeters, 100 millimeters long. Find the center, it's 30 by 30, your center is 15. Measure at one end, 15 mil, make a mark. Measure the other end, 15 millimeters, make a mark. Put your ruler on, draw a line to get the center. From one end, you will measure in 35 millimeters. Make a mark, put your square on, draw a line. This is the area we'll place our box. Okay, then from that mark, you've just measured at 35 millimeters inboard. Measure in 10 millimeters and make a mark on your center line and punch it. From this edge, measure in 10 millimeters on the center line here, punch it, and then you will drill those two punch marks with a six millimeter drill bit to take our tech screws. The box that's gonna carry our handbrake. It is 30 by 30 by two mil thick box. It needs to be cut at 110 millimeters in length, okay? Same deal, guys. Clean it all up, ready to weld, clean the inside. Now, this is how it's going to be orientated on our angle, okay? The angle will sit like this, and this needs to stick out this end. Don't weld it in that way, or it's going to be going into your seat and it's not going to work. It must be welded out this way. Now there's enough space allowed here to bring your angle in a little bit from the edges so you can get some welding, approximately five mil. You can bring it in from this end. You can bring it in five millimeters from the back and that gives you plenty of uh, room to get some welding and then plenty of room clearance here for our tech. Uh, we don't need to weld underneath it, guys. This is just supporting the handbrake the handbrake, it's not like there's downways force on this, it's just pulling the handbrake up. These handbrakes, I can tell you, they're a pretty piss weak spring that are in them. It looks like you could put a stiffer spring in them if you wanted to. You could probably even set them up with a load cell. Um, I might have a look at that because that Fanatec uh, brake kit I've got has got a bunch of load cells in it and I might be able to fiddle with that. But anyway, that's getting off track here. What I'm saying is uh, as long as you get welds in the top of your box right around the top here on the angle, that will be enough weld. Anyway, guys, that's how you will need to build that little bracket to house that particular handbrake. Of course, guys, if you wanted to modify it to be different, then there's nothing stopping you from doing that. This is just the way that the doctor has come up for it to work for my scenario. You may want to do things slightly different. That's the beauty of human beings and the human brain. Really, at the end of the day, you do it how it works for you. You can just use this as a guide. Again, guys, and as always, make sure you've got this squared. Put a square on this, okay, before you clamp it. Make sure it's square, all right? Make sure you've got some good ventilation happening as well. Now, let's tack it in each corner. Then we can weld in earnest. Ah, the flame, the flame. 
So that's it guys, once you've welded it, get that slag and flux off. Wire brush will do just fine. And, uh, oh yeah, she's warm. Uh, and then that's it. Guys, that's the bracket for the handbrake. Just got to locate it now on your seat frame with some tech screws uh, to your taste, to what feels comfortable for you. So once you've installed the handbrake, this is roughly what you're going to be looking at, peeps. Okay, if you set it up the way the doctor set up now, it's important to note that the doctor has offset his uh, handbrake the same as he's offset his shifter. Right, now just keep in mind, guys, that you don't have to offset yours if you don't want to. All right, that's how it works comfortably for the doctor when he's sitting in the sim. Okay. So I've offset my handbrake just by setting it on an angle across the box. But right, everything's tacked in. Right, and it's got all the strength it needs set up like this, okay? And if I want to slide it forward, I can just take those tacks out, move it forward. I don't need to. This is all set up now exactly the way that the doctor likes it. Okay, that's what you'll basically be looking at if you do that mod and build that bracket the same as I built and if you invest in one of those cheap flea bay handbrakes. Well, you could have knocked me over with a feather. Guys, no sooner had I welded that bracket and cleaned that flux and slag off and there was a little knock on the workshop door. The wife standing at the door with a grin on her face, letting me know that my parcels had arrived. So now the doctor doesn't know what to say. Literally in the same video, at the beginning of the video, he's bagging the post office and bagging the couriers to only have his parcels turn up at the end of the video. It is bizarre, but I don't believe the doctor should have to retract what he said because at the end of the day, it was a silly thing that those clown couriers did signing off that they had delivered my parcels under the same tracking number when they hadn't. And I'm glad I contacted the post office I'm glad I reported it because I reckon these have turned up this afternoon as a result. So don't let this shit go by, guys. Make sure you get straight onto the post office if this sort of behaviour happens to you. Okay, now, I don't normally go for this unboxing bullshit, but this is the shifter, okay? And I am going to unbox this for you guys because I want to see what this looks like sitting on that plate to see if what the doctor has... Uh, <laughs> set up there on that Merbau plate is going to be a work of art or a cock up and there's only one way to find out maybe the doctor should get himself a knife why would you need a knife when you've got a steel ruler oh look at that the power and the glory <laughs> all right Everybody loves a good unboxing. Now, apparently these things come with a couple of knobs. <laughs> I don't know about whether the company's full of knobs, but uh, <clears throat> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't assume these sorts of things, but apparently the shifter gives you a couple of choices of knobs. It's got the, uh, the new school shifter knob and an old school shifter knob. And you know what the doctor's going to be going with? He's going to be going with the old school. Oh yes, good, and the old school is already on the shifter. Yeah, this is nicely packed, nicely packaged. These Fanatec guys go all right, okay, so I've got lots of options here for connections. They look like they're about M4. I thought these were like M6. Oh yeah, they'll be the little slide-ins. Oh yes, here's our other knob. So this is for the, um, this is for the guys, okay? Um, <laughs> not your doctor's choice of car, uh, but each to his own. Now, hmm, this is um, proving to be a bit of a challenge. Oh, here it comes. It's coming, doctor, it's coming! There we have it, rightio. Wow, this is substantially larger than that uh, little flea bay one. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> Holy Shiite Muslims. <laughs> oh, it must be, in, it's probably in sequential mode. In fact, it is. I like the fact that you can just change that. Oh, yeah. Okay, there you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. Oh, that's smooth. Oh, yeah. That is smooth. That really, those detents are really like a, they're like a car shifter. Well, you know, let's not get too excited. Oh, you've got to push down to get seven. Yeah, yeah. Man, that's a chunky bit of kit. Okay. Doctor's going to do a little bit of measurement here. Right. Because these are meant to be 90 apart here, centre to centre. Now, I'll probably do this with my calipers. But I'm going to get a rough. Yep, that is 90. I think we're going to be all right here, peeps. It should be 70. And that is 70. That is going to fit on the shifter plate. Man, that is a chunky bit of gear. Let me tell you, that is a chunky bit of gear. Now, quite tall, actually. On that little shifter that I've uh, installed there just for a little bit of a test and see, I was going to have to raise the platform, the shifter platform, if it was small. But with this, that platform is going to be able to just sit without being uh, needing to be adjusted. I'm just going to put this... I'm going to put this on the rig, guys, and we'll have a quick look at it on the rig. Before we look at it on the rig, though, guys, there's a little bit of a comparison. It is me, and it is me, 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 and me, and me, 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 and me. Oh, yeah, I'm liking this. I'm really liking this. That is uh, substantially chunkier than the other one. So I would say, even just by looking at that, because the little guy, I was going to be looking at needing to, uh, sorry, I was going to be looking at having to actually raise the platform. I think that platform won't be going anywhere for the shifter. It is going to be exactly where it needs to be. So I'm going to jump in the rig. Uh, just bear with me, peeps. I'm going to hop in the rig and just get a feel for this. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yep. That is perfect. So, yep, in fact, that platform will need no adjustment for me uh, in, in, in raising it where I've got it set there as well as far as throw goes and for the doctor's ranger arms, um, it'll be where it is. So I've got my slider actually set uh, a fair bit forward to where others may need theirs. But uh, it depends on the shifter you're using, obviously, guys. This is for this particular shifter. It's quite tall. And um, that is a really nice fit and a really nice feel. Yep, that's going to be awesome. So I was going to think about maybe unboxing the V3 pedals uh, in this video. But I don't think I will, guys, or the video will go too long. So our next video, I'm going to uh, have the pedals set up. I've got to work out how I'm going to bolt them to the pedal board down here. Obviously, I'm gonna to have to do my measurements on the CSL direct drive wheelbase and get my plate in here. I think I will be doing the plate just in metal, not in Merbau again, but I don't know, we'll see. I think with the, you know, with the eight Newton meters of torque, probably want something that's, you know, got no flex in it at all. That timber will have a little bit of flex so I will end up doing this in a in a metal plate, in a in an eight mil, probably an eight millimeter thick metal plate on the steering wheel assembly here. Now the doctor was getting ahead of himself a bit in his last video, saying that once all we were really going to be looking at were the new peripherals, a bit of a test uh, with the rig with the game, and then we were done. I forgot to really talk about our our potentiometer placement. Okay, and I'm going to need to design. Uh, a carrying system for our potentiometers uh, because the, the way the motors are now being located forward, the old system used to come across the mid frame. Uh, there's no mid frame past our motor bracket holder there. So I'm going to have to come up with something basically. I think I'm going to do some type of bracket with a slotting 
arrangement. So then those potentiometers can be sort of fine tuned into place. It's gonna be very hard to get them exactly aligned. Um, everybody says that's the case and I know it is the case from the old rig. You can get them pretty close, but uh, getting them right on the money is very difficult. Obviously, uh, I've already done the video on how these potentiometers actually connect. You need to watch that video to actually see what you need, the materials you need to attach your potentiometers to your motor drive. Watch that video. Okay, before we meet again, guys, the doctor will work out a bracketing system to align those potentiometers as close as we can get them to our motor shafts, all right? That's what the doctor is going to do for you guys. And I also owe you all a humble apology for that flatulence earlier in the video. When my wife saw the rough cut of that, she was horrified. So apologies guys, but hey, you know what they say? If you don't eat, you don't shit. If you don't shit, you die. And now I'm calling it a day on this video. Thank you for everybody who's tuned in and uh, is visiting the channel. I encourage all you guys who are following the build, who are taking this on, just to keep at it, guys. You will get it done. Don't rush it. Enjoy the journey, as I always say. Any newcomers that are visiting the channel for the first time, that are getting involved in the build, taking this on, I just encourage you guys to subscribe. Help the doctor who's helping you. Stay safe, stay healthy, and take it easy out there.